I'm Matthew C. So today we have the chance to sit down and get the inside scoop on what it takes to quit the corporate world and become a successful social media strategist, where you get to live a more flexible lifestyle, working when you choose and with whom you choose. Today, I'm talking with social media strategist Disha Wadup, who has done just that and in a short space of time has managed to carve out the life she wants with just a handful of clients. Disha has some very important daily rituals that aid her focus and outcomes as a result. Routines we can all learn from and immediately put into practice. Disha's story is fabulous in that she, like many of us, are born with that entrepreneurial streak that makes us want to walk our own life on our own terms. Having spent years in the corporate world, Disha knew she had so much more to give and so much more to gain by creating her own company that serves his clients in the wellness niche. As well as providing social media services, Disha has also managed to spot gaps in the market to help other strategists refine their offers and essentially become more successful. It is a pleasure to welcome Disha to the Social Media Mafia family. Disha, what up? Welcome to the show. Hello, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Delighted to have you here. Uh, really looking forward to this this interview with you. I think you're going to be uh, really inspiring to the people that listen to this um, because they're going to be in a very similar situation to you, I think, or the, or the situation that you have been um, previously leading up to this point. So really looking forward to getting into the, the uh, details of how you've got where you are and what you do and what it looks like, what it feels like and, you know, those kind of things. So, yeah, great. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much for having me. No, no, no problems at all. Really looking forward to it. Um, so I'm just thinking, you know, perhaps a good place to start is if you could tell us about, you know, your kind of life story, perhaps, and part of the journey of how you arrived to where you are today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, way back when I actually started off in um, events was my original entry into the corporate world, if you like. I got a degree in events management, and um, then I went traveling. So I started off, uh, I, everybody has a story as to a reason they went traveling. It's usually some sort of turmoil. I broke up with an ex, so I was just decided to throw everything in and quit my job and run off to Thailand, because I thought that was the solution. So I went to Thailand. Um, and whilst I was there, I, was, I started teaching myself marketing. I built a website on my own for a, a travel blog that I'd started and I built my website up. I started teaching myself marketing and I joined loads of courses and then I ended up going to Australia uh, where I got a job in marketing and I was blown away that somebody would actually want to hire me to do what I had taught myself to do right. in the back end of Asia. Yeah. Uh, so I got a job working in a, for a recruitment company running their marketing uh, in Sydney, Australia. Oh, I started off in construction uh, and then moved to Sydney. And then I was in Sydney for about three and a half years working for uh, the recruitment company, doing all of their marketing, uh, but also doing the EA job for the CEO, the office manager job the computer tech person, everything else oh, is business. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where nobody else wanted to do it. Oh, D sure do it. Right. So, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. I quit that job. And I had started building freelance work up at that point. So I quit my job and I uh, went traveling around Asia. And I started building my freelance work and... Um, my portfolio for social media management, for marketing, got a few different clients on doing various different things um, as I bounced around Asia for about eight months. And then I got really lonely and bored, uh, which sounds really cliched if people haven't gone traveling by themselves, but it's really lonely. Um, mm. So I came back to England and got a job in digital marketing uh, for a digital marketing agency uh, who then I was account manager for. Um, and then they moved me over to a social media management role because they said I was really good at it. And they, they wanted me to do it. And I think, oh, yeah, I know I'm really good at it. So that gave me the confidence to quit that again and go out on my own again. Mm, fabulous. <laughs> so here I am. 
Well, that's such a great story. <laughs> I love that story. It's so it's so good. It just um, you're just destined to 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 walk your own path. It sounds to me, which, and I think that's the way a lot of our you know listeners are. They they feel that as well. Um, but that's also, um, I mean, what did it feel like? You know, when you quit the first, was it a scary choice? Was it like, did you have fear? Did you? I mean, what was your plan? Was there like some kind of? Did you save up a bunch of cash and think, right, I'm okay for like to travel for six months or, you know, a year? Or, or was it kind of like, really, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, three or four months down the road? How, what was that feeling like? And that, it was terrifying. So when I quit uh, in Sydney, I knew that they have um, what we would call in England your uh, retirement fund. They call it super over there. And once you've left the country, you can claim your super back. Um, so I was kind of just relying on that because I'd been in the country paying into my super for four years. So I was like, oh, that will, I'll get that and that'll be fine. Um, so that took like a couple of months to come through after I had left. So for the first few months, I literally just didn't spend any money. I was house sitting a lot. Um, I spent all of the time working, which is also why I got lonely because I didn't meet any new people. I didn't do anything mm. too exciting. I was just mm. in these exotic locations, sat on my laptop for <laughs> 14 <laughs> hours a day right. trying to figure out how to survive. Um, but it was, it was good. It was interesting and it was scary. And I didn't, I don't think I told anybody at the time because of course, from the outside world, when somebody looks at your social media accounts, they're like, oh, you're doing awesome. You're like living the life, sat by a right. pool. And I'm like, I just agreed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, oh, I like that. Um, that's fabulous so yeah so it was just kind of was it just like a feeling like I just had enough of this I, I just have to pull the plug and go my own yeah. way is that something that you have inside you you think that keeps re recurring yes yeah I've been one of those people when I even when I was a kid I would I, I knocked up leaflets and I did uh, cleaned cars and cleaned gardens and took dogs for a walk when I was a kid around the local village I had little job, uh, businesses at university where I would import jewelry and sell that. I literally have tried all sorts of different things <laughs> as I've grown up and went, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to go do that. So, Fra yeah, I think it's always inside of you as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I absolutely totally agree with that. I think it's a it's a trait by shared by by many entrepreneurs that that feeling to want to go their own way and be in charge of their own destiny. And that's certainly what what you're doing. So, what are the what do you? How does your daily routine look now that you've you're not traveling? You're sort of more settled now, I guess. Are you and your is that what it looks like now? Yeah, yeah. So I um, I bought my own house last year. So I tend to reside mostly in Manchester. I uh, get up in the morning. I go for a run. I always start the day with exercise. Um, yeah. And then I usually uh, get back, have a shower, have breakfast. I sit outside if it's nice in Manchester. It's not very often. Um <laughs> grab a coffee and I write my journal. I just do a lot of gratitude journaling um, in the morning to start my day. And then I try and sit down at my desk by about half eight, um, which blows some people's minds by how much stuff I've done by that point in the day. But I'm a morning person, so it doesn't phase me to get up at half five, six o'clock. <laughs> Um, and then I work for a few hours, take the dog for a walk at lunchtime, come back, work for a few more hours, and then I try and do some sort of sports or activities in the evening. And that's it. I usually try and take four and a half days of work. I try and take Friday afternoons and the weekends off. That's superb. It sounds like you've got it, you've got it worked out. I like the way that you've got that discipline as well, that you, um, you get up early, you... Um, you, you plan out your day. Can you tell us a bit more about the journal, the gratitude journal? Because that sounds really interesting. Yeah, so I um, write down at least three things that I'm grateful for every day. Um, and I found even when I was traveling sort of around Asia, that um, that was really, really useful for me when I was feeling crappy in 
those all those countries in this beautiful environment mm. um, to write down three things that are grateful for and it can be as simple as it's not raining today or it can be as deep as for my family friends for the clients that I have at the moment and that sort of stuff so it can be absolutely anything and I've gone back through my journal as well and had a look at what I've been grateful for in the past and it reminds me of people because I usually try and write names if I'm grateful for a certain person so it reminds me of people that I have been grateful for and then I can touch base with them again if I haven't spoken to them for a while or something so I find that really really helpful I love that that is such a great a great um, thing to do every day it's really just reminds well it reminds me that I should be doing some more of that in my life and um, because it's easy to not do that, isn't it? It's easy to not thank people. It's easy to not express gratitude if you're not practicing the art of it, I suppose. Like everything, we just we can skip over that sort of stuff and plow forward with our dreams and our, and our aims. And yeah, that important stuff can go by the wayside. Um, I mean, one of, the, one of the things I've been trying to do recently is, is reach out. And even if it's something simple, like send a message to somebody that I haven't spoken to for a while, just to say, hey, I'm still thinking of you. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, and I, I, and I find it helps. It helps. It helps refocus me. Uh -huh. It helps just keep the, the relationship alive. Um, so I, I guess it's something quite similar to that. But I like the idea of writing it down in a journal. That's that's almost more of a commitment. I think I like that. Um, yeah, and you can see it every day then, and you can see that you've done it as well. I, I'm a big. I like lists and tasks, and obviously mm. from an events background as well, I'm super organised. So <laughs> being able right. to pick something off, I've done it. Yep, done that. I can take it off the list. <laughs> being now on that subject of being super organised, that's got to be really, really important for somebody like you who's a social media strategist. Could you perhaps just expand on? You know, like, what does it mean, the social media strategies? I think I have a good idea of what that is. But, like, for the listeners, what? how does that work for you? How, like, what sort of stuff are you doing for clients? You know, how does it... Um, so I do everything, basically. Um, so what my packages include 100% management. So I do yeah. engagement. I do create posting. When I work with a client, I ask them to give me everything they've ever created ever <laughs> in a G drive. And then I take bits and pieces from that to create content that's written in their voice. Um, and then repurpose content they've written before, use it for blogs, use it for polls, questions, posts, and that sort of stuff. And then use that in their social media content. And then we include engagement. So it's totally a hands-off process uh, for the client. They just give me everything and they can pop in and do their lives when they want to and they can repurpose those um, and they don't have to worry then about mm. social media. Mm, I like that. So you're taking away the whole kind of pain of it really. You're just, it's covered. I'm, I've got it. Don't worry about it. Um, and do yeah. you, so how does it like, are you, do they look, what's the, the average client looking like? Because I could imagine like, you know, you, for that to work as a um, as a business model, you need to have like a handful, or I mean, of, of reasonably well paid clients, I imagine, so that you're not because I mean that wouldn't work if you had had like a hundred, would it? I mean, how oh would no, you... I take on a maximum of five clients. Okay, okay, cool. Um, that that makes sense. It. So then, is that does that, and how do you work it out, sort of time wise? You divvy it up based on how you're feeling or are you pretty strict on like no this this person can get three hours a week this person can get a day how does that kind of work for you it's funny i was asked this by a potential client the other day how much time do i spend and i i'm not a clock watcher at all so i don't know how much time i spend with each client because mm. i just create the content and sometimes you can get sucked into a wormhole, and especially because I work right. with clients that I'm I'm passionate about their industry. Like I work with yoga and life coaches and health coaches, which right. is something that I enjoy learning about and investing in anyway. Mm. So I can quite often get sucked into a wormhole where I'm reading articles after articles, and then I get sucked into another article. And hours can go past because I'm just as interested in it as their readers and their followers. Mm. So I don't tend to, to, to track hours. I just get it done because obviously all of that research and that 
lucky in is helping all of my clients as well um, because there are in similar niches. So I can't then say, oh, this time was spent allocated just on that client because I could repurpose it and use the same content for another client as well. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you touched on something which was really interesting, I thought, that um, is, I feel very, very important, and that's that you're interested in the work yourself. Um, so that's, to me, that sort of rings that you've you found your niche, you found your tribe, the people, the area, the market that you want to work with, because you love you love that industry. You know, I, I, I've seen people before that work on industries they don't enjoy, and it never works. It, all, it always ends up failing because they don't have a great deal of interest in it, so the work becomes a challenge, it becomes boring. But it sounds like to me you've really worked that out, and I think that's really very important for all social media uh, consultants, strategists, managers, is, is if you enjoy the work, you know, you're happy to get out of bed, you're, you're happy to read that extra article, which sounds like what you do, actually, so... Yeah, yeah. Hats, hats off to that for you for that. That's 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 great. And and I guess the other thing is it helps you. Well, you understand the market, don't you? I, I suppose, and the language of that 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 niche. Yeah, that- yeah. I think it's one of my clients said to me the other day because I don't know where you find all of this content that you create, finding memes and graphics and all this cool stuff. And I said, well, I'm in, I'm in all of the groups that all of your clients are hanging out in anyway because. I like to be in those groups. Right. So when I'm sat scrolling through Facebook, for example, when you're sat in the evening watching TV and I'm seeing all of the stuff that would be relevant to my audience, so I just save it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. I'll screenshot that, save it. And that's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just sat mindlessly going through Facebook because I'm in all of the other groups anyway. I think it's so important to be passionate about the, the clients that you're serving because if you're not, like you said, it's just – boring i worked with when i did that in corporate where i was working with um insurance companies and motorcycles like i've got no interest in insurance and motorbikes whatsoever and i'm on race race day tracks with celebrities riding motorbikes around going to vintage car shows my sister is a bit of a uh, she's a mechanic so i was showing her i rang video called her once when i was at this vintage car show interviewing this celebrity person well celebrity in the vintage car world and of course i had no idea who he was mm. and uh, she's going <laughs> you are so lucky i can't believe you're getting to do this i'm like uh, i don't know <laughs> no idea who these people are or what the cars are <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant yeah. yeah that's a great that's a great story i love that yeah um so how do you what do you focus on then like with your with your business i mean is it now you've got like five clients i think you said is that like what happens if one goes away do you have something in the pipeline that you're nurturing do you work on marketing how do you market is it all networking and referrals i think people would be kind of interested in how that works because one of the obviously one of the important things is to ensure that there's additional work further down the road if one goes or two goes or whatever um so it's you know like working on the business as well as just in it um Mm. so you know how do you how does how do you get work let's go from Um, there first yeah most of my stuff comes from referrals uh or facebook groups i'm in a lot of facebook groups and i work on the value of just providing value and and i have a facebook group specifically for wellness entrepreneurs um and People email me all the time just to say thank you for all the value that I provide in my group, um, completely for free. And I think that's the, the big thing of getting your name out there is just being helpful hmm. uh, rather than coming from a place of I need to find some work. Um, I just put on a webinar a couple of weeks ago now um, in which I was – adamant that it wasn't going to be one of those wish-washy webinars where it's just a sales pitch and yes there's a sales pitch i've just launched a coaching program as well um Mm. that will help people get their lead magnets sorted um because i was finding that a lot of people that i was were coming to me oh i want you to help me build my business up on social media i'm like great where's your landing page what's your lead magnet and they're like oh i have that 
well, how do you expect yeah. me to work magic for your business if you don't have an email yeah. sequence or a lead magnet or anything yeah. I can drive people to? Mm. So the webinar gave so much value that I had people just messaging me saying, I thank you so much for everything you've done and join the group and they get, I do free trainings in there all the time. I'm in other people's groups doing trainings and sharing content and ideas and things like that just to get people aware of who I am. Mm. And I Facebook message everybody that I, the friend requests me um, because my, all my social media is optimized so that if somebody friend requests me, there's no way they wouldn't know I was a social media manager no, and see my Facebook yeah. group and see my freebies and all the rest of it. So when I connect with them, they already know who I am. Mm, great tips. That's awesome. And I, I just want to just go back a couple of minutes there when you talked about the lead magnet thing. That's brilliant because I, I see that all the time. I, I think there's this, um, and I think that probably this has come from your experience of marketing in other companies where it's where the where getting the lead is vital, right? You need the leads. Yeah. Uh, and you need to put them into a you need a strategy in order to nurture them and turn them into clients. And that's actually where a lot of people that are new to this idea of social media management or, you know, consultancy or whatever, they miss that. They think it's all Twitter, you know, Instagram and um content but actually there needs to be a purpose behind it you know it's it's about funneling people somewhere somewhere along the line so they might become a lead I, and so that's great that you're doing that and it, it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that you're getting lots of interest in that it's i see that missing all you know all the time so yeah again hats off for that that's brilliant could you now tell us about, perhaps about some challenges or conflicts that you've actually faced i know you sort of touched on the loneliness before um do you is that something that you still do you still suffer from that? Do you still feel that? Or are you not, not so much in that? And then are there any other challenges or sort of conflicts that you, you know, um, that give you pain? Yeah, yeah. Oh, loneliness is a, a big one, especially working from home. I don't have a partner or kids or anything. It's just me and my puppy. So uh, although he's great, his conversational skills are not quite there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, I tend, that's one of the reasons I go to the gym and I have people that I can go and do sports and activities with in the evening. And it's funny, I tend to work out, I'm big into my fitness and health anyway, um, but I tend to find that when I am really busy, so the week of the webinar, I exercise like 10 times, 10 or 11 times that week because it's, it, it's for me, it's the excuse to go out and have, and have a conversation with somebody that's not work related, but also leave the house and do something active, come back and have more mental power to continue working. Mm, yeah. Um, whereas if, if I didn't do that, I might go to the pub with it for a drink or something. And then you just wait. I feel like I'm just wasting time right. when it, especially when you're busy. Mm. So for me, getting out of the house and exercising is a way that I do that. And I do it, do it during a lot of sports running groups and, um, climbing groups and all that sort of stuff and yoga um, to meet different people that are outside of my circle. Um, and I have up-leveled the gym that I hang out at and stuff like that. I did look at a co-working space for a while, but I the thought of having to get dressed in the morning <laughs> to go <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just totally put me off in the end. <laughs> uh, I totally get it. Yeah, no, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I get back from the gym and sit sweaty in my gym clothes for a couple of hours, do some work, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. have a shower at like 11 o'clock. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The li yeah, no, I get it. The life of an entrepreneur. No, I, I totally get that. I'm the same. I, I do similar things and go for morning runs and, yeah, sit there yeah. in shorts and, yeah. Exactly. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a pleasure actually. <laughs> it's yeah, great. yeah, and having the freedom as well. Like I'm, I've come down south uh, now before I fly, fly out on holiday, um, mm. and I get to pick and choose. Like I can hang out with my family this afternoon, or yesterday I went off and did some other stuff, um, and pick and choose the hours that you work. And mm. I think that was a big change, mental change for me okay. when I first quit my job mm. I was very much oh I have to sit at my desk from nine to five because mm. that's what everybody seems to do 
Um, but being able to shift that and say, okay, well, I get up, I realistically, I'm always working after five and before nine. Mm. So I can have that flexibility to take off the afternoon and nobody is clock watching me anymore. And I, it's up to me if I choose to do that or not. That's brilliant. And I, and I think that's probably one of the, yeah, I think that's a hard, that's a hard thing to, you know, hard mindset to adopt if you, if you're not used to it, you know, if someone's just quitting their nine to five, you're absolutely right. It's, they feel they should be busy. They feel they should be at their desk. But actually, that's not doing that is part of the reasons why you would take the leap in the first place. I think that's what people are looking for: is that flexibility and freedom. That's that seems to be a recurring theme I see all the time. Yeah, uh, you know, that that's as well. You know, as well as the financial benefits, it really is the f- the flexible lifestyle. I think it's the freedom to to do that and as you said just do what do what you like sit there in your running kit or, or go and see your go and see your friends you know when yeah. you choose right yeah yeah, exactly. yeah yeah so what's the long-term plan uh disha what are you are you going to be doing the same thing and five clients forever or i mean you decided against the shared office space are you just yeah what's what, got any sort of long-term plans or more travel yeah. or you know like it doesn't have to be work related it could be just where are you going yeah, so I am uh, launching my coaching program. I'm going to stick with five clients. Um, I don't want any more at this stage. Uh, launch my coaching program, which is an introductory at the moment. And then I'm going to, at the end of this year, have a membership uh, program for those that aren't ready to outsource all of their social media uh, management but want some advice on a regular on a regular basis mm-hmm. uh, and that will be work wise for now and then personal I am hoping to uh, maybe next year the year after get some spend some more time in Europe um, so I want to enjoy some more sunshine I spent five years traveling in the end and it was beautiful but a little bit far away from uh, my family, mm-hmm. and now I'm back. I'm thinking I'm getting itchy feet again, but <laughs> yeah. I, I want to go somewhere that's a little bit closer. I can take my dog. So I'm thinking the south of Spain at the moment for maybe oh. six months of the year. Oh, beautiful, lovely. Yeah, yeah. I'm a sun worshipper too. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. And the yeah, and the south of Spain is beautiful. Love it there. It's so good, and it's so easy to get to from UK as well. It's it's a piece of cake, right? Yeah, exactly. I spent last Christmas there. I drove down with the dog and it was 22 hours driving. We spent a couple of months over December and January um, and just, just to be somewhere warmer and everybody was whinging about the cold in England. And I was like, oh, I'm toasty. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, so I think we're just about um, getting to, to the end of our time slot here, Disha. Um, it's just as a parting sort of parting note, what's one sort of a bit of advice you'd give to somebody if they're thinking about taking the leap that you have? Because you're actually a really great example of what a lot of people want to do and wish they could do, but they, they just have a little bit of fear about doing it. What, what's, your, what's your big takeaway there? What would you say? I think the, the biggest thing is have the confidence to do it um, know that you only have to be a few steps ahead of your first clients. I, when I first started, I charged nowhere near what I charge now. Um, but and my clients still thought I was amazing because I was a little bit further ahead than they were. And that's all you need at that time and invest in yourself. I think people who are in the, the nine to five, especially, and those that aren't entrepreneurial minded, my, my friends that aren't entrepreneurs never understand how much money I spend investing in myself on coaches, on, pro, on programs, on courses, because to them, they don't need to because your job does it right for you right. if you need training. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting a coach and getting mentors and learning all the time is crucial, especially in the social media field because it is changing all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that is a, a big thing. And that was one of the first things I think I was – on my own for two months before I invested in my first coach last year mm-hmm. um, because it was I just needed that big push to, to get myself out there and get myself moving a bit more. Mm. Brilliant. That's such good advice, Disha. And how can people get uh, get in touch with you if they want to find out more about you? Is it a website or something? Or a... 
Yeah, yeah. So I've got socialtreats.co.uk um, and I've got a Facebook page, I've got an Instagram and my Facebook group as well is the Wellness Entrepreneurs Group. Fabulous. Disha, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, Time's flown by um, and you just had so many great insights for people that are listening to this. It's, uh, I think you're going to be an inspiration. Fantastic. Thank you very much for having me. I hope, hope somebody takes something away from it. Oh, I'm sure they will. There's some real golden nuggets in there. Thank you ever so much and uh, be in touch soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.